fuck you, you come out of surgery with a miracle? Well, I had the miracle maker, maker beside me, the brilliant one right here, Dr. Howard Center. When, um, when you first uh, gained consciousness, what was your, your first thought? What was the first thing that you were thinking? I think I came out of it quicker than I should because I got a little, uh, I don't know, was it loud or something? few gestures, a few of my rhymes. What, what, were you, what did you say? Can you tell us? Well, when I saw an opening of uh, life somewhere, I saw a light. I know everything's all right. But the majority of the people watching the, uh, the news tonight, a lot of people are wondering how, how the surgery was, of course, they've already heard by word of mouth that you're doing pretty good. If you were able to use this opportunity, what would you say to everybody who, who grew up with you? Well, at my particular time, I was concerned about what was happening with me, and this was a serious situation, and I knew I needed good support. I knew I had to have the best doctor in the world, and I knew I had to have my fans right behind me, no matter how they supported me. And they overwhelmed me. They, I was deluged with kindness, gifts, uh, language, uh, respect, everything. I think they were just returning some of, of what you provided them through all the years. And they obviously have not forgotten you. The city has a great love for you. It's quite obvious. We both deserve each other. When word uh, got out that you had to have surgery, I know that every radio station in town, they were all talking about you. And every TV station, all three of them, had stories on about you. It was quite a feeling. It helped. Touched. It was a little bit sad inside. Well, when um, I know the prognosis is great and the doctor uh, said that he removed everything and you're looking forward to getting on with things? I don't want to add anything to that because there's the expert. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> what, uh, what, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Have you thought about that? I'm going to... Uh, I don't know if it's permissible, but I'm going to try to lie a little bit flat on my bed. I was lying with my head elevated. Most of the time since you've yeah. been here. What about your family? I know they've been real supportive too. Very much so. Ethnic people are that way. <laughs> real Sometimes they overdo it. Overdo it? Yeah, right. Tell, tell, me about, can, tell me about some of those letters that you got for us. Well, they came from all walks of life. I got one from uh, Attorney General Pre-8, and one from Senator Coyne, and uh, everybody at the city office-in-law, everybody in the county office-in-law, anybody that has a law degree, and all the political people, because I can control their destiny. I can put them in and keep them there and take them out. <laughs> That's true, you can, yeah. you can. That's but I'm right. sincere. I, only, I would only try to help people. There are genuine good human beings in the world. You know? Some of the gifts that arrived from you, which one sticks out in your mind as being the most poignant? Oh, there was one that had a gold record. Joe Rock's uh, unique way of doing things. Henry DeLuca. And, uh, and little Porky the Pig. Everybody's a little bit creative in making their presentation to me. They're more or less doing it with sight rather than words.
besides the other thousands, I know that uh, my wife uh, remembers you well and <clears throat> grew up with uh, you on the radio. So, of course, I didn't grow up here, but you and I met uh, about 13 years ago, I think, for the first time. She remembers you well, and, and uh, it's interesting to sit and talk to her because uh, she remembers uh, one time she told me she had the radio cranked up and her father came in the, into the bedroom from the, to hear what all the racket was about. And he said, what are you doing? What are you listening to? There's a poor beach under here. Well, listen to the radio. A lot of intellectuals have a tendency to uh, get a little primitive and, and lose their culture when they listen to me. I take them in another zone. Then I bring them back to who they are. Okay. Um, this is uh, what's called a sagittal MRI scan. It's a computer reconstruction of the brain and skull uh, that splits right down the middle of the body. You can see here is his face and this big white structure, which, uh, according to the scale, uh, measures four to five centimeters in diameter, um, is the tumor that was pressing on the frontal lobe of the brain, causing him to have problems with thinking, memory, um, and other intellectual function. So when I saw him in the office, he was very slow to answer, could not name presidents, could not do simple calculations, um, but didn't have any obvious paralysis or loss of uh, arm and leg function. So that was the signal to you that there may be a... That was the signal that the tumor was pressing on the frontal lobe of the brain, um, causing it to not function properly and resulting in the, the loss of memory and uh, loss of intellectual function. What <clears throat> the um, is there? Okay, all right. Can you show us, Doctor, the about the size of? Uh, you can use that. Uh, that sure. Ball, but... Just from the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. This is the MRI scan or computerized reconstruction of uh, uh, Porky's uh, brain before surgery. Uh, this is basically a cut right down the middle, showing his face over here, the brain here, and this large white structure which measures about four to five centimeters in all its uh, dimensions, was underneath the right frontal lobe, pressing on the nerve to smell and causing loss of function in the frontal lobe so that when he came into the office, he couldn't recall the presidents, he couldn't do simple calculations, and he had loss of memory as well as of intellectual function. And this is the tumor that was removed at the time of surgery without damaging the surrounding brain. So the prognosis, uh, he's doing real well. The prognosis is this was a benign tumor, and it's cured, and it should not come back. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I ask you ladies just to go, um, yeah, just maybe a little? Okay. Your reflection, <coughs> your reflection's in the door. <laughs> That's good. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Center, can you show us... Uh, during the surgery, what it looked like to you and, and how big the tumor was? And just Well, the tumor was underneath the skull on the right side. So to remove the skull, we would show uh, approximately the size and shape of the tumor being this big round ball underneath more the right side than the left side of the skull, but pressing on both sides of the brain and pressing on the nerve to smell. So although the tumor was obviously not this color, this was the size and the position of the tumor, which corresponds very nicely to the MRI scan that we had preoperatively. Okay. And you were able to remove it? And we were able to remove it without damaging any of the underlying brain and saving the nerve to smell, which was being pressed on by the tumor. Okay. So prognosis for Porky? Uh, prognosis is uh, excellent. Uh, this is a benign tumor. It should not come back, and he should require no additional treatment. Wow. Would... Uh, uh I guess pretty much uh, the surgical miracle here, huh? Well, I think Porky responded better to the surgery. My wife says that some people are allergic to surgery and some people are not allergic to it. Porky certainly was not allergic to the surgery because within an hour or two after surgery, he was awake and chatting and pleasant. And within a day or two, he noticed the return of his memory and intellectual function and he can name the presidents back uh, farther than I can on this morning's exam. Wow. 
<laughs> is this, uh, in, in other cases that you've seen like his, would you call this a, a miracle recovery of sorts? Well, he's done very well. We see other people uh, who frequently do as well, but we see a lot of people who, as I said, my wife calls her allergic to surgery, who get brain swelling after surgery, develop infections, whose brain does not return to normal function as quickly as we'd like to see. So Porky's done as well as anybody could ever do having had this kind of surgery. Dr. Your pointer with your pen, that'd be, uh, be helpful, yeah. Very good, thank you. Boy. where men hunt sheep, moose, and other wild game, and where one man, Robert Hansen, hunted down...